Penny Lane, there is a barber showing photographs of every head he's had the pleasure to know. Hello everybody, it's Nate from Echo City Music Lab. Today I'm going to be doing a song by a little known band from the 60s called The Beatles. It's the classic Penny Lane. This is my first Beatles tutorial I've done on this channel and the reason why I picked it was I was just recently teaching it to a student the other day and I had never really thought about the piano part on the song that much or played it and I was just like wow this is such a cool piano part and um, here we are. Let's just jump right into it. So first I'm going to teach you the chords and bass line for the main piano part for the verses. I made a chord chart specifically for this tutorial. The link is down in the description. I recommend getting it, maybe printing it out so you can follow along. It'll show you where the chords and the lyrics uh, line up. So this song for the most part is in the key of B major. So that is um, five sharps. The only uh, white keys in that key are B and E. And having a handle on that makes the bass line a little bit easier to grasp. So as far as the right hand chords go, there's actually not that many. Most of the movement is happening in the left hand for the bass line. Um, so here's the chords. We've got a B major. That's going to be a B, D sharp, and F sharp. We've got an E sus2 chord. That's going to be a B, E, and F sharp. So between that B major and then that E sus2, only that one middle note just steps up. This is an inversion on an E sus2 chord where the B is on the bottom. We've also got an F sharp 7 chord, and we're going to do it like that. So A sharp, C sharp, and E might seem strange. There's no F sharp in it. Whenever that comes up, we're going to be doing an F sharp in the left hand, so then you, you hear that, that F sharp 7 chord sound. Then in the second half of the verse, we're going to go to a B minor chord. So just like the B chord before, instead the middle finger is down on the D. So B, D, and F sharp. The Beatles never really stick within a key. And finally, we've got an F sharp 7 sus4 chord. Uh, once again, the F sharp is going to be in the left hand. And notice this is just like that F sharp 7 chord. Um, the only difference is that uh, B instead of the A sharp. This is for the moment where we're going to be going F sharp 7 sus4, F sharp 7, F sharp 7 sus4. F sharp 7 before it turns around. Okay, so let's take a look at the whole chord progression as it appears on the chord chart, and it's got the left hand bass notes in there. So anytime you have that slash, the note right after the slash is what the left hand plays. So for example, when you see a B over A sharp, that is B in the right hand, A sharp in the left. And as we step through this bass line, there are some distinct chords that emerge, like for example, that's a G sharp minor 7, but I decided to write it in the chord chart as a B over G sharp. Both are technically correct, and while maybe there's a little more ink on the page the way I did it with all the slashes and stuff, I thought it was a more straightforward way to think about it for the purposes of this tutorial. So let's just follow these notes down. So first we've got B, and there's no slash, so the left hand just plays a B, which is the identity of the chord. Then we've got a B over A sharp, B over G sharp, B over F sharp. Now the chord now changes to uh, the E sus2. So I'm going to change that in the right hand, and there's no slash, so it's going to be a E down here. Then we've got E sus2 over C sharp, then E sus2 over F sharp, and then finally we're going to resolve down to the F sharp 7 in the right hand while just keeping that F sharp in the left. I'm going to do that one more time, and notice it's just one hit per chord, just one count here. So if it wasn't obvious, for the first part of that, the left hand is just stepping down a B major scale. And I'm using one, two, three, four for the fingers. I cross my thumb under for the E. And then I usually do fourth finger for the C sharp. You could do either your thumb or your second finger, whichever feels more natural for this F sharp. Um, but then, since there's two F sharps in a row, I just hop it to my fourth finger because that kind of sets me up to be ready to put my thumb back on B as it turns around. And there's one little thing you can do if you want to get fancy, which is right after the C sharp, um, I'm going to do my second finger in this case, uh, you reach down to the low F sharp just for a second and then up to the high F sharp and then of course hop back to the fourth finger to get ready to go up, so like this.
So like one, two, three, four, one, two, and three, four, one. So that's on the eighth note between the beats. Let's go a little further. So we've just done in Penny Lane, there is a barber showing photographs of every, and then for the next line, we're gonna do the same thing at first. Had he's had the pleasure to know. And after that, we're going straight to the B minor here. And this is the first time it stayed on anything for more than just one count. It holds uh, the B minor for a whole measure. One, two, three, four. So I'm doing quarter note chords to so that pulse, that bum, bum, bum pulse is continuing. It's just staying on the chord now. Three, four. Then we've got a B minor over it, G sharp. One, two, three, four. For a full measure again. And then a full measure of B minor over G. So the left hand just steps down to G. One, two, three, four. And again, technically that's a G sharp minor seven flat five chord. That's a G major seven chord, but we're just thinking of it as right hand B minor and then here are the bass notes. Almost done here for the verse. So next the left hand uh, bass note goes down to an F sharp and the right hand's gonna go back and forth every two beats between the F sharp seven sus four and then two beats on the F sharp seven regular. And then two more on the F sharp seven sus four, two on the F sharp seven, and then we're into the next verse. So altogether, that whole second part of the first verse looks like this. Of every head he's had the pleasure to know, two, three, and all the people that come and go, stop to say hello. So that's going into the second verse. Let's talk for a second about that rhythm I just did because it comes up in the chorus as well. That's the. So I'm just keeping that quarter note pulse in my right hand. One, two, three, four. And we're adding an eighth note in the left hand in between beats two and three. So like one, two, and three, four. One, two, and three, four. One, two, and three, four. One, two, and three. Four. One, two, and three to get the hang of that rhythm, you might want to just kind of loop it around on a static chord. One, two, and three, four. So the second verse is just like the first verse with different words, except there's one extra chord at the end to transition into the chorus. I'll show you. On the corner is a banker with a motor car. Little children laugh at him behind his back. strange penny lane and then we're into the chorus so this time it only went from the f sharp 7 sus 4 to the f sharp 7 once so two beats like that two beats there and then it goes down to an e so left hand hits an e bass note you're going to keep your pinky on that e there and do uh g sharp and b there so that's an inversion on an e major chord so yeah g sharp b and you're just gonna do three hits on the quarter notes, a little more emphatic than um, anything that came before it. Very strange. One, two, three. And you kind of rest for that fourth beat before going into the chorus. So let's look at that chorus. And the chorus is simpler, it's a bit easier. Um, interestingly, it is not in the key of B, it is in the key of A. So that's got three sharps in it, the C sharp, the F sharp, and the G sharp. And only three new chords here. A major, that's gonna be A, C sharp, and E. Uh, C sharp minor, it's gonna be C sharp, E, and G sharp. And D major, which is D, F sharp, and A. So same shape as that A chord with the black note in the middle. We're gonna keep doing that quarter note rhythm in the right hand, and it's one measure of A, one measure of C sharp minor, and then it's two full measures of D. Let's do it. Penny Lane is in my ear. Eyes. Three, four, two, two, three, four. And the second time through, it's actually only one measure of D before we go to the F sharp seven, which we learned before. There beneath the blue suburban skies, I sit in meanwhile back. So for meanwhile back, just like you did on Very Strange, it's three kind of aggressive hits with a rest for the final count. One, two, three. 
Mary in Penny Lane. And we're into the third verse. Let's go back on that chorus because I'm going to add in that rhythm we were talking about before. If you want to just keep it holding out the whole notes in the left hand, that works too. But we can just apply that rhythm to the whole chorus. Penny Lane is in my ears and in my eyes. Two and three, four, one, two and three. And doing that rhythm also makes the two measures of D feel less like dead space if you don't have a bunch of horn players in the room going doo, 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 doo. Okay, cool. We're actually almost there. The next verse is just like the first one, but with different words. And then we've got another verse that's kind of an interlude because there's no singing and instead on the recording there's a piccolo solo. So you could just leave that blank and have it be an instrumental section. You can hum the piccolo solo or maybe you have a friend that plays the piccolo. Then we've got another chorus, another couple verses, another chorus. And I'm going to play the whole thing at the end so you can see how it all fits together. But everything I just talked through, there's nothing new in the piano part. Finally, after that last chorus, there is the outro, which is technically just another chorus, but modulated up a whole step back to B major and the chords we're going to need for that outro are B which we've been doing all along then D sharp minor and E major so D sharp minor is D sharp F sharp and A sharp and E major is well we've already done an inversion of it in this song but this is just going to be root position E G sharp and B and both times through, the E will hold for two measures, and then you finally just end on a B. Here, I'll show you. Penny Lane is in my ears and in my eyes. Three, four, two, two, three, four. There beneath the blue suburban skies. Two, three, four, two, two. Penny Lane. And then you can just end it there. One more thing I want to mention real quick before we attempt a full cover of it is the song starts with pickup notes for the voice, which means you start singing before you actually hear the chord and it's really easy to start singing on the wrong notes because you don't have a reference yet. So it's good to just test the vocal notes. Maybe just playing a B chord will kind of trigger you to be like, in Penny Lane. Or you could just cue yourself by playing out the notes to get them in your head. It's a F sharp, a B, a C sharp, and a D sharp, so that's in Penny Lane, in Penny Lane, there is... And then when you hit that B chord, it'll sound like it's in the right key. Okay, cool. So now I'm going to attempt to perform the whole thing. As always, if you enjoyed this or found it helpful, please consider subscribing and turning on the notifications so you'll know each time I release one of these videos. I'm trying to do it about once per week. Give it a like and let me know in the comments what song you want to learn next. Okay, here's my version of Penny Lane. In Penny Lane, there is a barber showing photographs Of every head he's had the pleasure to know And all the people that come and go Stop to say hello On the corner is a banker with a motor car Of little children laugh at him behind his back to keep his fire engine clean it's a clean machine Penny Lane, the 
barber shaves another customer. We see the banker sitting waiting for a trim. And then the fire.